Walter Burns was at once a scholar and a patriot. And that, unfortunately, in the contemporary world and in contemporary America, is kind of rare. Patriotism is not natural, but has to be taught or somehow acquired. And the question was then, and I suppose still is, how was this new patriotism to be taught or somehow acquired by later generations of citizens? On the one hand, uh, he loved the country, thought people had to be encouraged to love it for reasons that had been stated by Walter's great hero, uh, Abraham Lincoln, especially in a free country. It can't be taken for granted that people will simply love the country and do the things that are needed to protect it. This was not simply uh, the rah-rah patriotism of a war hero, which he was. Walter was a veteran of World War II. He had served from the absolute beginning in the Navy. He had seen action. He used to like to tell my children he had taken North Africa single-handedly, when they were still young enough to believe that. <laughs> and so he had a very powerful sense of what the country had been through. And Walter in particular had a, a, a sort of odyssey after World War II, but eventually they pitched up in Taos, New Mexico, where a writer's artist colony had been founded. He was going to be the, you know, great American novelist, but then eventually he uh, burned the manuscript. I just decided that that, that wasn't him and wound up uh, going to the uh, University of Chicago. And uh, someone told him, well, you have to take a course with this fellow, Leo Strauss. And Walter said, ah, I said, I'll do it next semester, next semester. <laughs> and finally he did. <laughs> He was very greatly influenced by Leo Strauss, and Leo Strauss said, we should go back and read Aristotle. We should go back and read old books because we can still learn things from old books. And it's not enough to say, I don't completely agree. All right, you don't completely agree. What is it you think is right? And if you start by saying, well, no one is right, and there is no right, you're just gonna go through life chortling and chuckling and being frivolous and silly, and that isn't the life Walter Burns was gonna lead. Walter believed that uh, true patriotism for an American uh, includes an appreciation of self-criticism. We are not expected to love our country simply because it is our country. Love can be blind, and love of country, like love of wife or husband or lover, can be blind too. But ours is not supposed to be a blind patriotism. But he always insisted that our criticism of the Constitution be fully informed. That criticism had to be based upon a, a full uh, understanding. Uh, and it was that fuller understanding that he spent a good deal of his life in reviving. Walter Burns was one of a very small group of scholars who made the founding relevant again and really fundamental to our understanding of ourselves. We take it for granted now that, well, of course, if you study America, you have to read the Federalist Papers and you have to think about the Constitution and the Constitutional Convention and John Marshall, not just the latest Supreme Court cases, and you have to read Lincoln. That was not the case when Walter Burns began writing on these topics in the 1950s and into the 1960s. And he and a small group of friends and colleagues of his really uh, revived the study of the founders, showed why you couldn't understand America without understanding the founders. I think part of what happened to Walter and to a lot of other people is that the left changed out from under them and uh, came to really reject the vision of the Constitution. To be a partisan of the Constitution, which is if Walter was any kind of partisan, I think that was his party, by late in his life meant that he was a conservative by default, but I don't think he was a conservative in the way that the conservative movement understood that term. I can see how Walter would be uncomfortable with the term and a lot of people of his generation were but the fact is he and they transformed conservatism in a way that made it more like them. I think what today's young conservatives mean by thinking of Walter as a conservative is purely a compliment. Uh, it means that they see themselves shaped by his teachings. Walter Burns was at AEI uh, when I came here in 1986 uh, and uh, he was here for all of my tenure as president. Up until his 90th birthday, he was in the office every day. Right up to the end, uh, he was the complete uh, intellectual and, uh, and uh, the archetype of what AEI has always tried to uh, promote and insinuate into larger political debate. When Lincoln was a young man, he gave a speech about the Founding Fathers in which he called them a forest of giant oaks. I thought Walter very much represented that image. These were people in the founding whom Lincoln felt had greater challenges than his own generation. Walter Burns was one of the 
giant oaks Lincoln spoke about. And he's left an extraordinary legacy for those of us who are still here at AEI, his scholarship and his great strengths as a colleague and friend to many here.